You know, there, there have been contentious times in American history before, um, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, there were a lot of bombings in the United States uh, by, uh, you know, revolutionary groups, uh, you know, mostly targeting property and, and, and stuff, small, small devices for the most part, though, though some people did actually get, get killed in, the, in those blasts. Um, but I mean, there was, there was fighting between, you know, I remember videos or, or old films of, you know, construction workers battling with protesters in, in the streets who were against the Vietnam War. Do you think the country is more divided than it was back then? I don't think it's been as divided since the Civil War as it is today. Uh, we've been wow. going in that direction. Uh, the two parties just weren't working together as they were when I first came to Washington uh, two weeks after John Kennedy was inaugurated and began to cover the Congress. And they'd make deals. Now, if you try to make a deal with the other side, you're the enemy. I mean, you're not a good American. May I see your birth certificate anyway? Uh, We've come to this point for a lot of different reasons, but you mentioned Vietnam. That was a big breaking point. Up to Vietnam, we were still basically the country that had gotten together and won World War II and was happy sort of with things and, and hoped to make, uh, professional men in those days hoped to make $10,000 a year at the end of their career and get a gold watch. That was a goal. And in the meantime, they were feeding their families and sending their kids to college on less than $10,000 a year. Well, we've come to the point where the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer. And finally, the poor said, well, I've had enough of this. And so when this big guy that they thought was a, well, not just a television star, you're fired, but a billionaire, which he wasn't. I mean, he had, he had billions of dollars of assets, but he had billions of dollars of debts. And so if you add it all up, he wasn't. But he had a big airplane and he said, I'll get the steel workers. I'll get your job back for you. No, you're not going to. I'm sorry. I love to have the jobs back, but countries are dumping steel all over the world. We're never going to be able to compete with our wages. And he said to the coal miners, coal will be revived. No, no, coal is on the way out. Sorry. I'm sorry for the coal miner. Uh, but they believed him. The thing that makes the difference now, Anderson, is that most of the country didn't know Donald J. Trump, as I knew him, as people who had followed him, as I'd interviewed him about his debts in 1990. Uh, and they saw this guy who, hey, he's a businessman. We need something like that. And of course, some people saw the fact that those rapists from Mexico needed to be gotten out and all that. But I think most of the people who voted for Trump, and I think the data shows it, good people, good neighbors of, your, of yours and mine. Uh, they would have given the shirt off their back if, if we needed it. But now they know. Everyone knows who he is. No one can have yeah. the excuse of saying, well, I didn't realize he could do that. <laughs> There's nothing he can't do. Yeah.